the moment after the you know media cover it left a lasting impression on me it gave so many women an avenue to express their feelings you know it was shocking to me that there were so many women who had not disclosed their personal experience with the sexual abuse you know thinking that it was okay to let the perpetrators go free but no it is very important to put them to you know task and uh, that is why you know i wrote this book so that more and more the movement continues and it really reaches uh, the masses uh, obviously media has to be more responsible and they have to play a very responsible role in uh, you know putting both facets of the story not only one side so so that you know the people can evaluate and make a decision and impression accordingly good afternoon ladies and gentlemen this is chetanya aroda from frontlist media and uh, i welcome you all to the dvlf 24 hours authors marathon this is one of a kind marathon because i guess for the very first time for 24 hours we will have an authors marathon having authors from various genres of of written lots of numerous uh, amazing books and uh, joined by me is mr karan puri he has recently written his book called me do as the name suggests a very prominent book and uh, if uh, if i may get a chance to introduce him he is an indian author his first fiction novel was happens desi boy in america and has been an um, i would say a big hit a best seller rather and the book was also mentioned in india today top 20 books back in 2012 and he has recently been featured by daily wire as the uh, in the list of the 50 most influential influential authors of 2021 welcome to the authors marathon sir thank you thank you very much a pleasure to be here uh, so uh, before i start with my questions i would really like that why don't you tell the viewers about your book okay i'll tell you a little bit about this book uh, i wrote this last year during the lockdown and uh, first i launched it as an ebook uh, the hashtag me too book was released as an ebook on amazon first uh, so it was a, obviously a challenging part for me you know launching the book online and we did the launch on oxford bookstore live so that was the first and uh, so it was really nice for, uh, you know the main reason i wrote these stories it was a collection of six stories which i wrote on the me too movement or uh, fictionalized characters because i wanted to make people who have gone through this abuse feel alive and there were a lot of stories which are actually had not come out about this me hashtag me too and uh, i wanted to make them realize that it's okay you should come out and you should actually uh, tell your story it's not your fault and you have to uh, get rid of that baggage and uh, you deserve to leave, lead a you know baggage free life and it is time to transfer the weight of the wrong doings to the wrong doers to the culprits so me to the book it inspires us to be more evolved and compassionate that is the message that i want to drive with the book society plays a major role in shaping up a person's mindset and psyche so it is the, this mindset that i wanted to change with my book and it's a fictionalized version uh, motivated by the movement you know it is a collection of short stories as i said and the details of the movement are available in public domain and the book is mainly primarily to create awareness and that was the main reason and now it's uh, you know the book is out and i'm just uh, hoping that this year the hindi version of the book will be released uh, around march april so that you know it reaches more audience and connects with more hearts so that was my aim of writing the book oh, oh, sir my uh, the, uh, this question actually has already been asked a lot of times but mm-hmm. still it never loses its relevance that The right. Me Too movement turned out to be an equally big movement for media channels as well as for those who watch these channels. So right. I'm talking from a viewer's point of view. And mm-hmm. uh, do you think that we really miss the essence of this movement by giving it a completely different face and not take it by what it was? No, actually, you know, Me Too, as I said, was about raising awareness. 
and what happened in hollywood it really got widespread media coverage and because of that there's a lot of discussion on sexual harassment particularly in hollywood it started with uh, led to high profile terminations from positions held by people as well as criticism and backlash so there was uh, false reports of sexual assault too but when they happen they are put more in spotlight for the public to see but this can actually give a false impression that most sexual assaults are false but it's not true they account for only 2% to 10% of all the reports so these figures don't actually take into account that the majority of victims do not report that they are assaulted or harassed so you know that is the thing lacking but and media was very important you know because the movement after the you know media cover it left a lasting impression on me it gave so many women an avenue to express their feelings you know it was shocking to me that there were so many women who had not disclosed their personal experience with sexual abuse you know thinking that it was okay to let the perpetrators go free but no it is very important to put them to you know task and uh, that is why you know i wrote this book so that more and more the movement continues and it really reaches uh, the masses and not only you know the high society and uh, if you see you know um, each of the stories are different and unique and uh, written from a human perspective without wearing any glasses so it is very important that you know we drive of the point and or uh, you know have a continuously you know talk about this so that more women come out and speak about it but like uh, like you mentioned that you know a lot of cases weren't reported or a lot of right. cases were, were even false cases so right so as, as much as the me too movement has fired the spark of feminism would it be right to say at this point of time that at the very same time the the fire of feminism has lost its ethnicity now see uh, i think uh, actually uh, the abuse of power by men in higher offices was there prevalent it was an open secret and many women across the industries uh, have been subject to such lewd remarks so suggestive behavior and assault and often been penalized so now more and more women are uh, you know g- going to the higher ranks and they're doing well and you know overtaking those men so but i feel it is very important that it the awareness and the prevalence of you know the impact of sexual ward- violence is there and uh, i don't think it's uh, causing any negative uh, or air of feminism as such i don't agree with that uh but obviously you have to it depends on person to person how they perceive it sir but uh, at, at the very same time when uh, when this me too movement when it you know reached masses through through the bollywood mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. a lot a lot of cases came up especially right. and they weren't expected to come up nobody could have imagined that something of this kind would even happen in and in, in an industry like bollywood so right. do you think that that this this was possibly a uh, use this this was used as a tool for some say pr or some get some light in the media especially for for an actor who, who hasn't been in the news but suddenly gets there because bollywood so in, has had its own dark secrets yes so even in bollywood if you see um, the me too movement in india started from bollywood when tanushi datta came out and then more and more women came out a journalist came out so that was the actually the starting point the tipping point uh, in india at least so i think uh, you know it's uh, that was all, also a good revelation because uh, that uh, helped it you know go down and uh, to the masses and also you know they also started speaking up and there were journalists who started speaking up and it was in all corridors of power so you can't say that you know they were uh, bollywood uh, you know the women uh, were not actually uh, you know there were false cases and all it was obviously a percentage were false cases and obviously those cases uh, they didn't go all the way right so you know the, there were some cases like uh, even the sajid khan one 
that didn't reach his conclusion the director again got you know uh, uh, to do another film and he continued his career so there were uh, at least some learnings from all that and some people actually you know the women when i talk to them they are happy that at least now men are scared about you know uh, not doing the right if they do do wrong then they will be taken to task so at least that has you know helped us to have the some amount of equality between men and women and that is a welcome change in society and that is what we are hoping for and that is what we are trying to achieve so i am really happy with whatever has happened and i think this should continue and uh, there should be a balance of power even in corporate even in bollywood anywhere so that is very important what is wrong has to come out and it has to be corrected that is the you know equality in society is something which i always strive for and uh, promote so you know it has to be changing your society perspective your human perspective and how you think the the main problem is how the men think right now right the mindset the, when our politicians speak then what are they speaking are they right or are they wrong to talk about women in such a derogatory manner so all these learnings they will take you know our youngsters are very informed and they will see what is right and wrong they will decide you know what is right what is wrong and then they'll you know take uh, their decision accordingly so i feel you know the future generations are uh, need to take this forward and always you know there has to be a balance which has to be kept and i am happy that you know um, that is uh, you know um, going on now and it is doing well the movement is really you know reaching its uh, whatever they it was set out to do i i, I would completely agree here yeah. yes the, the very simple reason being that at least this has given women a platform to open up but at the yes. very same time this has happened in the era of not only which is led by media but also which is led by social media and it it would have had it, its own impacts so what do you think was possibly say a wrong spark from the social media point of view in the moment and how mm -hmm. would people have avoided it see social media you see is evolving every day and uh, you know people are actually using the digital medium if you see twitter you know anybody and everybody uh, has their point of view they're talking about it but you know obviously you have to control how you use it how you how you actually um, use it to your advantage so you know th these kind of platforms are something which can you know um, help you in order to uh, drive a cause forward so you know there are obviously people who misuse it but you know that is not the way to do you have to uh, whatever you are you you put your mind into it and you are working for a cause you 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 can really drive that cause really well through social media so i always look at the positives and i think uh, you know um, there will be people who who will try and use it for negative publicity and other things but uh, obviously the truth will prevail and people will understand what is right what is wrong sir like i completely get your point here but now my my thoughts my views slightly differ and mm -hmm. what i believe is that as much as as much as men have learned their lesson right. at the very same time this transfers an equal amount of power into the hands mm -hmm. of ladies as well right. now of course this this is a big platform and i i wouldn't like to you know demean anyone or anyone's mm. point or point of views but right. what i believe is that this moment because mm -hmm. of social media it has mm -hmm. slightly given an extra amount of power into the hands of women and there there have been cases where women have misused this concept of me too for men who are actually innocent so mm -hmm. what what can be the best way possible to tackle such cases because anyway the truth will prevail but for as long as right. that man's life is at risk it is an equal risk because that's there true is a life at danger yes uh, you know these kind of things obviously people have uh, you know talked about it and certain women have actually come out in support of the men you're right it has happened so definitely it should uh, you know obviously 
they have to support what is true. So if a certain woman is misusing that power and misusing a certain cause, a certain movement towards her advantage, they have to be taken to task. You are correct. But you can't generalize it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the women you cannot generalize so it depends on case to case basis so obviously uh, you know so that people understand and obviously law takes its own course and those things come out in the open uh, you know sometime it takes time but they do come out in the open but uh, you know, at the very same time uh, i mean the, the the indian judiciary is is massive it's huge but still there is a shift and the shift is very evident and prominent in such way that mm-hmm. when the victim is a lady mm-hmm. the media perceives the case from a different point of view right but when the victim is a man the media completely changes its face what what can be the possible reason for such big media houses to actually change the perspective of the case like completely 360 degree and yet manage to get coverage and people still get say, uh, get you know be, uh, very much impacted by such cases yes, it's true um, obviously you know i don't know what uh, like why media does uh, that some of the media actually uh, use this to their advantage to their trps to their ratings but uh, you know obviously people are smart now you know the public is smart they understand that what is what is wrong, right what is wrong they evaluate like for example there are some people uh, some there was some actor and there were uh, friends of the actors in bollywood who supported the actor against that woman who actually had filed a case on him so obviously there'll be people who will come out and they'll support and they they'll share at what is right what is wrong so then uh, obviously media has to be more responsible and they have to play a very responsible role in uh, you know putting both facets of the story not only one side so so that you know the people can evaluate and make a decision and impression accordingly so i agree with you sometimes it is misused by the media uh, but then uh, i think um, we are all you know we have to decide like uh, you know how it's going to play forward uh, at the very same time sir as much as much as men have learned their lesson mm-hmm. this actually begins a new phase of responsibilities for men as well to make yes. such big industries a safer place for women what mm-hmm. do you think can be the role of women here to take this me too movement to the next phase you know, make it stronger make it more evident yeah well women have to be really you know know that you know they have been given this responsibility and now they should focus on doing what's right and not hide anything not be shy not not uh, you know you have to it's not only she too i i think it's me too he too everybody we too i would say for the me in the me too is a person an individual a self respect a sanctity a sentiment an emotion a breach of trust so you know this is very important that it's v2 and uh, women and you know mothers daughters everybody have to take it upon themselves to ensure that you know this movement uh, drives that change that you know that needs to be uh, uh, coming in a society and uh, uh, change the mindset not only of men but also women who think like that i'm def i'm i've heard a lot of stories in the news that the women who were speaking out for men so um, it is both side it's not one side it's v2 and uh, you know it is very important that this goes on and uh, um, as you said that everything um, you know this movement continues and reaches its conclusion so that uh, process and that you know responsibility lies with the women of course uh, so like you mentioned that uh, your book hashtag me too it has it has a uh, fiction fictionalized characters so right. uh, ha- uh, are these fictionalized characters stories of real people who have faced these incidents or you have taken inspiration from these incidents and then weaved them into a book 
so if you see i have one story on the corporate life corporate me too also and uh, i actually interviewed few women who have gone through this and uh, with uh, as per my interview with the indian express i uh, mentioned that i have you know decided to keep their identity as confidential but yeah, obviously a part of it uh, is what they told me a part of it is my imagination but definitely these are you know fictional accounts you can say but uh, motivated by you know uh, the real uh, stories which i heard from them so uh, sir uh, uh, like uh, this uh, this is a pretty amazing piece of literature and me too as a movement has grown a lot it has grown for good rather mm-hmm. despite the fact that there are a lot of differences and we've discussed them thoroughly yet right. it holds the power to grow more and in a good way so do you think that the more and more such movements come up we can expect more and more such amazing books from you yes uh, actually yeah, i always like to write about something which is close to my heart so my first book i wrote on a student's journey uh, to the us and it was a humorous account of a indian boy going to the us and studying and how what you know new um, experiences he has how he faces those challenges in a new world in a new country in the us so and the second one was on this and i have a plan to continue this momentum and uh, currently since my um, you know my um, I, my passion is writing so i'm a regular lifestyle influencer also so i want to write something uh, with uh, with the next generation in mind so i'm writing a book uh, with the teenagers uh, who really like uh, to do blogging and they like to be a chef since i'm passionate about food uh, so i'll be you know working on with the celebrity chef on this book which i am you know planning to release sometime in the summer and uh, the work has started so you know this uh, my journey of writing continues and i you know hope to touch more hearts and you know reach people um, and uh, you know um, do give something of value to the society and some uh, you know, motivate some people to you know do do things the right way well, that, that's pretty amazing i'm sure looking forward to the next release as well that was that was thank you, thank a you. really insightful session so thank you so much for being with us it was a pleasure to have you pleasure pleasure to have you and thanks for having me thank you thank very you. nice thank you